my guest right here in the studio. Uh, Benway, 23 local government areas. Uh, the numbers, 347,668 to APC and PDP, 356,817. Clearly, the PDP has won in Benway. But uh, I don't know whether you have taken note of the trend where PDP has won. The margin has not really been uh, too wide, except, of course, in a few... Uh, states like um, Enugu or, or so. Mm -hmm. But overall, when you hear that 2 million, 2.3 million people actually registered to vote and then you had accredited number of voters uh, slashed to almost half of that number, if not less, way less than half of that. In the case of Benue, 786,000 uh, accredited voters and valid votes, 728,000. Rejected votes, 34,960. You were saying earlier, for, for a state like Benue, 34,000 rejected votes is quite a lot. It's quite, it's quite huge. It's quite huge. Uh, it simply means that a lot of voter education must be, uh, must be pushed out. And uh, beyond just telling them, I think a specimen of those uh, cards should be uh, procured in order to show the people how it's done. The, the ballot and papers, you The mean? ballot papers, you know, a specimen kind of. And, uh, and that should be done by the, by the INEC themselves in order to show people and, 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 and to assist them to do what is right. Um, Janet, do you think that INEC has been able to really to justify uh, the budget that was allotted to it for voter education, over 700 million for, I don't think for, for voter education? From what you have seen so seen. far, in all the states that we have had, about 20, 22. 22 states so far yes. announced? I, I don't think INEC um, can justify the budget the amount of money given even for this election. Let's talk about the education, voters' education that you mentioned mm. specifically. Because a lot of people are not sensitized about this election. A lot of rural women are not even aware of what they are supposed to do. Many of them are illiterate, market women, you know. So these are people that you need to speak their language. I was involved in a sensitization project organized by an, organi an international organization two weeks before uh, election, and I was asked to speak to the women in Yoruba because that's the only language they understand. And I was able to connect with them. So they should have looked for people in those local places that can speak the language, come down to their level and really educate them, make them understand the reason why they need to vote. Because some of them don't even know why. Some of them just hear corruption, corruption. They don't even know the meaning of corruption. <laughs> so you need to explain to them that if you don't want corruption anymore in a state, you need to come out and vote and vote in, you know? So I think they have not justified that. They have not also justified the time given for this election. I know they may not have been given four years because the preparation did not start four it's years ago. Let's assume it started three years ago. It's enough time with money where there is a will, there is a way, even if you are given two years to prepare. And any process, any machinery, is subordinate to the people administering that machinery, the quality of the people administering it. So that is what we are seeing. In other the quality, words, the quality of training that went The quality of training, the quality of the people involved. Because all of them, especially the adult staff, you cannot say that they all have the same passion, the same training, the same commitment, the same discipline as every other person. I, I, I wonder whether you can actually guarantee that uh, about a million people would have the same uh, passion. But then again, the real job would be for INEC or other stakeholders uh, to actually ensure that there's a system in place, whether there's passion or not, that those systems are actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, applied. Uh, Ayo, what do you think about what she has said, about um, INEC not justifying um, its pay, as far as voter education is concerned? Well, for me, I think INEC need to expand more. You have to uh, work with some civil society organization, and especially faith-based groups. You have to work with faith-based groups. Uh, you know, a lot of people were very religious in Nigeria. So you can imagine faith-based organization uh, teaching people how to cast their votes, uh, what to do and what not to do. It will go very far. So beyond INEC working with some ad hoc staff, they need to work seriously with civil society organization and faith-based organization. But isn't also. that where volunteerism really should come in? Well, those volunteers must also come from groupings. They must come from groupings. You have to teach them. 
and uh, she, she talked about rural communities, you understand. You might, this, the, the only platform that you can work with more at rural communities are cultural groups and faith-based organizations. Because in every rural setting, you find them there, you understand. And if you can plug in very well with them, I can assure you that all of this uh, thing that we've seen will be things of the past. Now, this level of cancellation of votes, uh, it take in Benue, for example, uh, about uh, how many uh, 122, votes 000. are affected? 122,980 yeah. mm. people affected by those cancellations. And in the case of Lagos, about uh, uh, 67,000. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's time for us to take it to Imo State. You have heard uh, from Benue, Lagos, Bauchi, and now, Imo. Which one is the next state? From Imo State, there are 2,037,569 registered voters. Accredited number of voters, 585,741. A total number of votes cast 542,777, that's 542,777 votes. Uh, APC polled 140,463 uh, in uh, Imo, and uh, PDP scored 334,923 votes. As a result of my practices, uh, Votes in 97 polling units were affected and 63,048 um, voters affected by the practices uh, in those number of uh, polling units. Uh, Janet. We've seen the results in Imo already. Uh, it's, uh, yes, yes uh, it's surprising though. Is it? Why is it surprising? Well, it's surprising because, um, Okura, because of Okoracha. I felt that he would be able to deliver this state. More oh, yes, gather for, more for his But party perhaps the, um, the vote went because of um, PDP's vice president or some candidate. That may be the reason why the vote for PDP went to 300 and something. And uh, Imo has not even been one of the states that President Buhari had always been winning. And so it's not surprising that he so did. It follows, it follows that pattern. pattern. Now, if you look at the electoral geography, you see that. Imo is not part of the state that he had been winning. Plateau is not one of the states. Benue is also not one of the states. All the states that he had been winning, he has won. And very, in very wide margin too. Look at Bono, he won. Especially in, in the 12 key northern yes, states. Yes, in Bono, he won by 92%. Okay, yes. So it's the, the pattern is playing out somehow, except for the few surprises, like I mentioned before, Ikitin and Nasarawa. Ayo, from all indication, nothing really seems to have changed much as far as the pattern, the voting pattern, and the reason why people go to the polls, you know, what they have in mind when they cast their ballot. Uh, if you were to compare with 2015, 2011, 2007, it's followed the same pattern. Well, I believe a lot of things have changed. Uh, if you look at the figures that, that were turned out in 2015, uh, it, was a, it, was a, I mean, it was said that uh, figures were being written and right now, uh, you don't see people using state, um, state powers against the people's will, uh, or like before, where mm. the state machinery is there to be deployed, particularly security operatives, and uh, you see a situation where people just tend to write figures. But right now, people are going to vote, and their vote are counting. Uh, for Imo and, uh, and Benway, I think what happened there it's, uh, is the infighting infighting within the party and uh, perhaps if the governor of Benue within, was still within the APC, within the APC, mm. APC would have cleared Benue mm. much, much, much easier. Uh, for Imo, of course, you, you, you see that the governor also have affinity for another party mm. and uh, that can also account for, for some, uh, some voters who are not deeply entrenched in the, uh, the system of things. There's, there's possibility that votes could have been thrown to the other party like we saw in Ogun State where the, the other party had some votes, and if that vote was counted for the APC, the APC would have had more votes. So the infighting also accounted for that. W would you say that um, in looking at all the, the patterns so far and the numbers that have come in, that uh, there were any uh, protest votes? 
Well, that's what um, I wouldn't say that. Okay. I, would, I wouldn't say that. I think the APC have done well in the Eastern States. I mean, comparing to the kind of propaganda that was that was uh, that was pushed, that was pushed. Uh, the APC did did fairly well in the, in the Eastern States. Although you, you could actually say that the numbers uh, for the APC in Imo is an improvement this time yeah, around it's an compared, improvement to, improvement, compared yes, to 2015. Thin. But because of Okorocha, we expected it to be more. Even better. If Okorocha were not there, this would have been an excellent result because they had never had numbers like this. But because of the person involved as a governor, and like you said, they didn't want to, they didn't use, it's apparent that some governors didn't use state machinery to, to get the votes. For instance, Oyo, the governor did not, may not have used any state machinery. If not, he would have made, uh, gotten the Senate ticket. Mm -hmm. But he lost, and he even congratulated his the, opponent. The, the Within winner. one hour of losing, he, he congratulated. And is that an indication that we're making progress as far as our political or democratic culture is concerned? Are we making yes, yes, we're progress? making progress. At least corruption is being fought headlong within the electoral system. I'm even talking about the democratic culture. Yeah. That attitude, our general mm. attitude towards, you know, the, the uh, so-called... Yeah, sportsmanship. Yeah. You know, where um, in the past you had a situation where it was a winner takes all mm. and, uh, you, you know... I think people are getting to understand that it's more expensive. It's more expensive to go through the judicial system. A system where lawyers could just throw you a bill of two billion and all of that. So they rather save their money and wait for the, uh, for the, for, for the next battle. And of course, with the kind of uh, war that's fought headlong in the judicial circle right now, so you can't just go to the, uh, to the bench and buy, and, buy, and buy your electoral victory. Mm. Now, in states like Edo, where the uh, you know, margin of victory is very slim, very slim. It's about and uh, uh, other states, if I can uh, quickly go to Lagos, for example, uh, 580,825 to the APC, 448,015 uh, to the PDP. Do you expect uh, post-election litigation as far as some of these states are concerned? Though you think some people might want to just, you know, save their, like I, like save I, their money like and avoid I told going you, to the court. People will save their money. <clears throat> and secondly, you cannot buy electoral victory anymore in the judiciary except you have hard facts. But for a state like Edo, Edo has always been a very stronghold of the PDP. And for Commander Dad Shomole to come in to break that down, he has done a very good work. And I've told people that are very close to me that uh, we would need, uh, the APC would need to do more work in order to decap the PDP there. Remember that Chief Anini actually came from there and uh, they built a lot of stronghold in that area. And the APC is not and sleeping. And those strongholds remain strong. They are still there, they are they're still, still strong. There. They are still very strong. Janet, I expected that as the chairman of APC that Shomale should have done better, delivered the state, you know, campaigned so well that he justified that position as, because how do you explain that the state that belongs to where the state, uh, chairman comes from, he loses it. In political language, it says a whole lot. But that's one of the surprising things about the, the results that we've gotten so far. In Adamawa, for example, the, the uh, candidate, the presidential candidate of, of, um, of the PDP, uh, didn't necessarily win his, own, his own uh, domain. What do you think really could have played out in all of this? Is it a reflection of the fact that truly the voter at the end of the day is becoming or has become king in the electoral process? The voter is becoming king. He hasn't become king yet. If they have become king yet, all of those people who stood aloof would have casted their vote. But the voter is becoming king. They are, they are getting to realize that their vote do count. And uh, I think the security operatives also have to do more work in order to assure the voter that when you go out, nothing will happen to you. You will cast your vote and return back home safely. Do you think the issue of security cast any kind of shadow, dark shadow, over the whole um, election? Yes, in maybe states like Yobe, Bono, where there is a serious problem, or Boko Haram, and also in Rivers and Baesa. Those are states that there are always expectations of crisis. And it's understandable because there's so much power struggle because of the oil wealth, uh, which is the common wealth, and 
they are all struggling to control it. And so nobody wants to give power to the other easily. So there's always crisis there. I ask but that question against the backdrop that the, the international observer groups and including the local observers mm. did state in, you know, in their uh, release so far that, yes, there were pockets of you know, uh, violence here and there, but not enough really to mar the whole process. Uh, uh, as far as they're concerned, it was generally free, fair, and credible and transparent yes. uh, process. I think so too, because the security situation generally was very peaceful. People voted, they were not intimidated because the policemen did not even carry arms in any case. They were not intimidated, they were not disturbed in any way from voting. Very few cases of ballot box snatching and crisis and maybe hostility. But generally it was a very peaceful and transparent. You know, transparency is uh, it's maybe the right to information. Transparency is different from openness. Openness is beyond transparency. Openness is involving the stakeholders in decision making of the process. So openness was not necessarily there, but there was transparency. Where there was transparency, we had right to information like what we are seeing now. They are counting the vote, they are telling us details of what every party got. That is right to information. That is transparency. But openness is right to participation. Um, Ayo, do you think you've not seen enough of openness? I mean, do you agree with her that there's, uh, there's a difference between transparency and openness? Let me take you back to what um, the uh, representative of the PDP, Osita Chidoka, former aviation minister, said in, in, you know, in making some observations uh, about uh, the issue of accreditation by, uh, you know, uh, by card readers strictly, which was what INEC insisted on. But there were instances where the card readers, some, some INEC staff, refused to use the, the card reader. And on the other hand, you had a situation where voters themselves refused to use the card reader, like in the case of uh, Benue, for example. I think it's best to stick strict to the rules. If the card reader does not read your card, then you can't vote. Because we have situations where we were told that people are clone cards. So how do you explain that? I saw a situation where people did not even keep their cards very well. So people were putting their cards in their purse and moving with it every day. Of course, wear and tear will happen to it. Some had their card uh, lacerated in some part. It's going to affect the chip at the back of the card. Definitely your card will not be able, I mean, I mean to be recognized and all of that. If we allow everybody to take the alternative route, then you are going to be opening a window for all manner of things to be happening. So people need to be told on how to keep their card. For instance, my own card, I went to keep it in my very stronghold. You understand, where I keep my sensitive documents. So I only bring it out once in four years, or once in three years, as the, as the case may be. That's interesting because, I mean, a number of times, TVC News actually went to the streets to feel the pulse of people, you know, and uh, find out their readiness. Uh, this was towards the elections, of course, and each one, actually brought out their PVC. And you were wondering, <laughs> are we to conclude that people, you know, just carried their PVCs some along people, with them Some people everywhere. use their, their PVC for identification card. Mm. We should not be. Uh -huh. Does that explain why we have such, you know, huge numbers of registered voters? It could be. And the disparity between that and the, no the total number of I can, I can tell you for sure, I can tell you for sure that one of the main reasons why the voter number, I mean, in Lagos State was very low, was because of the fact that the card reader could not read those cards. Uh -huh. Because of wear and tear. Like in my right. polling unit, they refuse to take the alternative route. If, you, if, the, if the card reader doesn't read your card, then you can't vote. Janet, yes. let's look at the overall uh, process so far. Hmm. What, what have you been reading into it? There was so much hope about the third force or some dark horse somewhere mm. actually uh, shaking the tables or, you know, upturning what mm -hmm. we have always known, this two horse race. Yes. That didn't happen. The expectation. Did they, did they overrate uh, themselves, talking about the other parties? You or know, did we expect so much from them? You know, fear is a weapon of warfare. So the, where the expectation for the dark horse or the, for the third force was so high to make people afraid that there was something coming 
Nobody knows who they were and what they were coming to do. But with the results we have seen now, that expectation has risen and fallen so flat that now we have seen that all those thought forces, they need to, in different, they need to come together and show themselves as one or two big parties so that we have like three, four parties, not 73 political parties, who people, some people say they are trading platforms, not necessarily because they want to, to, to win election, they are just there to trade as a trading platform. And some are also there because of ego, they want to be president. They are not working their political career like this young man here, he started from local government chairman, you know, and work their way up to the top. They want to start from the top to the bottom. You know the cobweb, uh, the spider. Okay, you know what? We'll, we'll, we'll explore all of those. <laughs> and uh, I must add too that uh, Mr. Yadewale did, uh, you know, um, I'm not your 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 PR manager, but you you did make an impact definitely in the Amuo uh, area. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, we'll continue. Uh, Nigeria votes continue to stay with us. You're welcome back to Nigeria Vote Studios right here at TVC News. I am Ngozi Alebu. My guests are still very much with us here. Ayo Adewale, former chairman, Amu Odofi, local government area, and Janet Mba Afolabi, a journalist. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. We've been looking at uh, the development so far. A number of states have been uh, the results, the presidential election results from uh, quite a number of states, from Ogun to Edo, Lagos, uh, Benue, Bauchi, Imo, uh, so far. That's uh, in, in addition to the 17 states that we already got uh, results from uh, earlier in the day. And now you were talking about, you know, the, the need to start from the bottom up. Yes. As against the top bottom, bottom. that we've been seeing from the new... The, the, what some people would describe as the neophytes or newbies, if you like. Yes, and I was trying to compare the, what they are doing with a spider. You know, a spider is a unique creature. It builds its house from the top, top bottom. It doesn't build from bottom up. So they are, are, are kind of adopting that kind of style in politics, which is not going to work. Politics, you should start from your word. Have polling agents from your words up to the state, then, you know, that way up. Not from Abuja to your word in the opposite direction. And that's why you can see that some of them have scored zero. Does it mean that they did not even vote for themselves? They didn't believe part. in themselves They enough? didn't believe in themselves mm. enough to vote for themselves. Does it mean that even the polling uh, boots in their ward, nobody voted for them? It means they didn't have agents in their wards at the state level and local government level. It also means that they are using the parties as a platform to contest elections, not necessarily to bring about change. And we can see that they are not capable of bringing the change from the results of the election. Therefore, they cannot make any impact from the results and therefore they are also not relevant. So they should come together and be relevant by making that, making sure that ego, because I think the problem they set is ego. ego. Aside. Well, uh, 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 all right, it's time for us to hear from uh, Plateau State, the presidential election results uh, from Plateau State right there in Abuja, the International uh, Conference Center, where the INEC Coalition um, Center is. Uh, we're about to hear. Right, you're welcome back from the news update there. Back to the Nigeria Votes studio. Uh, my guests are still very much with me here, Janet. Uh, thank you very much for uh, staying through and, you know, sitting through all of that. And uh, Ayo Adewale, mm. thank you so much. Hope you're still enjoying your coffee. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Now, Kano and Katsina, the numbers are out. Tsunami numbers, you would say. Well, well 1.4 million in the case of uh, Kanu for the APC uh, to the PDP's 391,000. Um, Katsena, 1.2 million against PDP's 308,000. Well, it shows the political awareness and culture of the people. Uh, 
they are very aware that uh, if you cast your vote, if you elect your leaders, definitely they are going to uh, make a lot of impact in your life, basically. And I want to commend them for coming out so strongly and voting the candidate of their choice. Okay. For Janet, me, we have come to the one million vote states. The tsunami the, level. <laughs> yes, the <laughs> one million. And when the votes come, it. the scale will just tilt <laughs> and go up <laughs> like that. So we can see it in Kano mm. and Katsina. Kano, we have 173. That's the margin. That's the margin. Yeah. And in Katsina, is about 900,000 margin, which is very big which is the game changer, statement making results, <laughs> I must say. And maybe these are the states we've been waiting for, so that <coughs> we will know where which party is going to. However, we are still awaiting those from the south-south, the yes. Aquaibom, um, Rivers, Rivers and Baeza. So when they come in, perhaps the game may change a little, but I, I don't know, let's wait and How see. How much of I a game changer these other states would be? They uh, may not be much of a game changer because this Katsina, I'm even surprised in Gozi. Mm. You see, the, the, they had the highest number of those who, read, uh, who collected their PVCs. Yes. That was 3.2 million. And they, they had the lowest number of people who did not collect. Just 42 people did not collect PVC. Right. And I'm surprised that just 1.6 were accredited. And out 98 of percent one they said I was in, writing in it down. Katsina. Yeah, 1.6 mm. people were accredited. 1.6 million. Million, yes, 1.6 million. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you know, sometimes when you are yeah, calculating in your uh, mind, but not in the your numbers, mouth. The numbers really are truly <laughs> uh, very dizzying, yes. uh, come to think of it. Um, Ayo, so um, well, we're yet to hear, uh, get the results from places like Rivers, uh, Bayelsa, and... Um, What's the other state Aquibu. now? That you, and Aquibu. Aquibu. Um, Like I asked her, how much of a game changer? Do you think at this stage, at 26 states so far, it is clear where this is going? Well, it's very clear. It's very 26 clear. 26 states out of uh, 36. It's very clear that the the ruling party is um, is winning definitely with the amount of figures that we've seen and those that are expected. And if you look at the data of the figures that are inherent in all of these states. Uh, I think President Buhari... Okay. You, you know, let me just put you on hold and remind our viewers about the uh, total tallies uh, so far. Imo, that's what you're seeing there. Uh, total valid votes, 511,586 votes. Uh, APC garnered 140,463 uh, votes. That's about 27.5%. Uh, all right, going on very quickly to Benue. Uh, total valid votes 728,912. APC scored 347,668 votes, while PDP scored 356,817. Uh, APC 48%, PDP 49% uh, there. While others, all the other parties altogether uh, had 3% of the total. Uh, votes. Now to Edo State, where you had a total uh, vote tally of uh, 560,711. APC scored 267,842, making it 48% uh, of the total votes, while the PDP scored 49% of the votes. That's uh, 2, 275,691 votes, while others uh, total made 3%. All right, uh, the numbers, 26 states so far, uh, leaving us with another about um, 10 states more to hear from uh, INEC at the National Coalition Center there, at the International Conference Center in Abuja, where the numbers have been uh, pouring in, more or less. Okay, let's take you there now. <laughs> 